Hey, thank you so much for joining me here today. I'm Sikadu as we join for another day of the Book of Warfare. And today we're looking at the title, Overcoming the Spirit of Fear. It's more than just an emotion, it's a spirit. I want to ask you a question. How many of you would actually pay somebody to um, punch you and bust your lip? <gasps> I mean, what? How many of you would actually pay somebody to stomp on your toe? You're like, <gasps> what kind of question is that? No one in their right mind would. No one in their right mind would pay somebody to cause them pain and suffering or hurt and harm. Most people would do just like opposite. They would go to great length, pay great amount of money to ensure that they keep themselves safe, to ensure that hurt and harm stays far from them. But unfortunately, people are paying lots of money every year, millions if not billions of dollars in order to bring their own self hurt and pain. You're like, how is the world is that possible? Well, we're going to look today to, to uncover for you a secret weapon that the enemy is using against people to destroy their lives, to destroy their careers, to destroy, destroy their dreams, and even to destroy their destinies. You know, and what we're talking about here is fear. Huh? Now, before you said, oh man, fear is emotion. Well, it's not just an emotion. Uh, let me explain to you. There are certain things in the spirit realm that have multiple use and multiple definitions. It cannot just be classified as one thing. For an example, something that we have very near to revealing the spirit realm is the sun. One person may say the sun is light. Another person may say the sun is heat. Somebody else may say the sun is energy. And all of them are correct but none of them is by itself. No one can say it's heat, but it's not light. That's not correct. They can't, no one can say it is only light, but it's not energy. That's not correct either. It is all those things and more. So we have to understand that in the spirit realm, one thing could be multiple different things. Now that is very complexing to a lot of individuals because we in the earth realm, we live in a three dimensional space. We are restricted to time, place, and space. Only we're made of matter. The matter can only occupy one place and one space at one time. But it's not that way in the spirit realm. In the spirit realm, um, a spirit can occupy more than one place at one time. You're like, what? Yes, it defies our laws of physics because we're in the three-dimensional world. But in the spirit realm, it's not. Can you, have you ever considered how God could be in me and in you and in someone over in Germany and somebody over in China all at the same time and could be in heaven? Like, what? because he's not restricted to time, place, and space, nor is he um, made of matter. He's made of spirit. The Bible says God is spirit. And so spirit have different uh, abilities and powers and, and strength and might that defies human logic. And it goes above and beyond not only our comprehension, but the laws that restrain us, the laws that restrict us. The Bible says this, a very famous verse about God, that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What does that mean? God is not restricted to time. He operates in time, but he existed before time and he will exist after time ends. He made time. The, the, in the beginning, when God created the earth, uh, I have it in the earth, that was the first date of creation. But he existed before he created the heavens and the earth. So he is not restricted to the boundaries and the limitations of time. He's told us when the first day of time will start and then he also lets us know in the book of Revelation when time would end. So he lives in eternity, but he operates in time. He operates in time to fulfill his will. And because he operates in time, time is now going, but one day time is going to stop and everyone will enter into eternity again because eternity is greater than the natural realm. Now, so this is very important for us to understand. God does not live in time. He operates in time, but he dwells in eternity and he's going to take us all back into eternity at the judgment, whether it's the great white throne judgment um, for the sinners or whether it's the judgment seat of Christ for the Christian. But everybody will be judged and then everyone will go into eternity. So that's very important that you understand just a small portion of how the spirit realm operates. The Bible says in um, 2 Timothy, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So from that revelation, the Bible lets us know that fear is not just an emotion, but it is so much more. It is actually a living spirit. Now let that settle in for just a moment because we're about to go somewhere deep in that. Okay. 
Fear is a living, eternal spirit. That means it will go on forever. It will not die. Now, how do we how do we know that? Because we can look at the contrast or the opposite of fear, and the opposite of fear is love. Now, let's look at a couple of things about love. The Bible lets us know God is love. So, and the Bible says God is spirit. So God is the spirit of love. Um, and of course, we know that there are different types of love, human love. There's like five or six different types of human love. It is the love that parents have for their children, which is one type of love. Then there's a brotherly love of two best friends from grade school. Then there's another type of love for people for their country, another type of love for an individual for their spouse, and another type of love for two individuals who are intimate. These are all different levels of love, um, but each one of them are still human love. The love that God gives us is the agape love. It comes from him out of heaven. It is God's uh, ability to love far above and beyond human capability. And that is the love God tells us to operate in. Every other type of love will fail you because they generate from a human. But the, the agape love generates from God out of heaven and comes to earth. And the Bible says he, he has shared abroad the love of Christ in our heart. So God has to shed it in our heart in order for us to operate in that type of love. Anything less than that? It's human love and it doesn't meet the, the litmus test. It fails because if you bother a person enough, they're going to they're gonna turn and they're going to turn. stop loving in that regard because it's human. But if they have the agape love, it will go on for eternity. Now, why am we talking about love? Because love is the opposite of fear. Now, love is a spirit. So and when you look in the Bible, the Bible says that love is a fruit. Uh, it's one of the fruit of the spirit. He has given us love, joy, peace. Um, um, long suffering, goodness, gentleness, meekness, temperate faith. Those are the fruit of the spirit. So love is a fruit. Love is also a weapon. Love is also a gift. Love is also an, an anointing. Love is also a spirit. Um, love is so love has the capability of being many different things. It's not just restricted to only being an emotion. So when people say love and emotion, that's it. Point blank. Boy, are they, uh, they don't know the depths of the spirit realm. They're only looking at it from an academic stand, standpoint. The standpoint from an academics is uh, they can they cannot bring the spirit of love or fear into a laboratory and, and apply tests to it. They cannot expire this uh, and uh, subject it to the scientific method. They cannot use microscopes or telescopes or any other type of human instrumentation in order to test for a spirit. Because again, the spirit, their power is above and beyond that of human limitations. And so they're not restricted to the testing and the instrumentations and the experimentation of man methodology for trying to understand their worlds around them. So therefore, they have very limited knowledge. They notice that it always manifests itself in people's emotion. So they would classify love and fear as only emotion. But he who created love and fear. He created all things, the Messiah, the Almighty, God Almighty, Jesus who is the Christ, the living word, the Bible says that in the beginning was the word. Jesus Christ is the living word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. He was with God the Father and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, 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 the living word who is Jesus Christ. All things were made by him or without him was not anything made that is made. All things were made by him. All things were made for him. Then that same living word came to earth and dwelt among us. And, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, why is this so important? Because I have to lay out for you an understanding of love so you can understand the opposite of love, which is fear. The same way love is a spirit and feel many different dimensions and many different levels and many different degrees, so is fear. Fear is a spirit that feels many different dimensions, many different degrees, many different levels. So when a person goes and they pay their hard-earned money to sit at a movie to oh! or for 60 minutes or 90 minutes or 120 minutes to be scared, and to, and to be terrorized because of a new release of a new movie, they don't understand the harm they're calling to themselves. They don't understand how they're antagonizing their own life, terrorizing their own life, harassing their own life, and destroying their own destiny. Why? Because God put a certain protection over the earth, and with that protection, with individuals, demons and devils can't just treat people any old kind of way. On most occasions, there's certain spiritual laws that are, that are that operates in the spirit realm. You know, they're going to have lots of different movies that show that a person just wake up and demons and devils just 
dive all in there, but they can't do nothing about it. Well, that's not necessarily correct. There are certain protections that God put for individuals to help them. And here's why it is so very important. Only once certain laws are violated can individuals, demons and devils begin to possess people and try to take over people and try to do all this kind of other stuff. And so we have to understand what those requirements are. What are those limitations? What are those barriers that the enemy use? Now, here's one thing that's very, very important. If a person is allowing themselves to come under fear, watching fearful movies or scary movies and all this kind of stuff, their soul is like a sponge. It cannot discern between what is right and what is wrong. The, the soul requires that the spirit of the man or that the man use good judgment or the woman use good judgment, good discretion to keep themselves from evil. The Bible says whatever is, whatever is good, whatever is honest, whatever is lovely, whatever thing is a good report, if there be any thanksgiving, I mean, if there be any praise, um, think on these things. So God said, think on these things, think on good things. So the more you think on good things, the more you think of love and God's goodness and God's own suffering and God's patience and God's meekness and God's temper and God's faith and joy and peace and love, then the more it draws those things to you as a magnet. On the opposite end, the more a person think of fear and terror and violence and hatred and malice and revenge and uh, ill will, though it draws those things to them. Because what you think on is like a magnet to draw those things to you. So the Bible says, think on good things. The same thing with fear. If a person is going in there allowing themselves to be indoctrinated for 60 minutes or 80 minutes or 90 or 120 minutes, they can't say, well, I'm a Christian and it has no effect on me. You're opening yourself up and fully giving your heart, earned money and attention to being inundated with fear. And once that fear comes in, it makes a deposit in that person. And uh, many times it's an instant deposit. Once the person go home for watching a scary movie, they got to turn on every light in the house because they're afraid, you know, and they, they need somebody, please come with me to the bathroom. <laughs> okay. okay, I don't mean to. <laughs> well, but what happened is this. The enemy does that. After a day or two, oldness may begin to come back and it may not be as fearful, but they don't know what they have done. They have just deposited fear within their soul. And what that fear does, it stays there in their soul. And then weeks later, months later, uh, years down the line, it comes back and it shows up uh, um, itself and it acts out to the people a uh, disadvantage. I mean, when a person get ready to go for that job, but because fear was deposited within them, uh, five years ago, 10 years ago, it, and it's eternal, it never dies. Now when they try to go, they, uh, if something fights them where they don't go for that job even though they need it. Something fights them so they don't never get married even though they want to. Some fight them so they don't ever have children although they want to. Some fights them so that they don't ever uh, um, do what is necessary to build their dream and build their life and credit. Fear keeps people in bondage. And this is why the Bible says fear has torment. It torments people. When a person know that they, I really want to go for that job, but I, I don't want to be rejected. I don't want them to pass me over, so I'm not going to do for it. Now they're tormented. They kick themselves. Like, oh man, I wish I'd have done something. I wish I'd have got married uh, 20 years ago. I wish I'd have had babies when I could. I wish I would have finished college. If only I wasn't afraid that I, if I wish I would have gone ahead for that promotion, I wish I would have gone ahead and tried to, and, and they regret themselves. And the enemy himself harassed them and terrorized their life for every missed blessing and every missed opportunity. But it all because they allow themselves to deposit fear within their own lives. But the Bible tells us that we're not to deposit fear. Don't allow yourself to be sitting, to sit and watch. I don't care how entertaining it is. You're wrecking your destiny. You're wrecking your fear. One person may say, well, oh, I'm old enough. It doesn't bother me. But your soul don't know the difference. Your soul is like a little baby. You ever have, whenever a person have a little baby and a little toddler walking around, that little toddler don't know the difference between um, putting, you know, picking up a, a, a piece of cordon from putting a key into a, an electric socket. They don't know the difference. So it's the parents who have to watch over them. Well, that's the way it is with your soul. You have to watch over your soul. Your soul is like a little baby. Whatever you feed your soul, it's going to take it in. But the result of that can be detrimental to a person's destiny. So the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit of love. He has given us that spirit. The, the contrary of fear is love. Once the fear has set, it grips on a person's heart, it manifests in all kinds of stuff. A person, a person can have fear of heights, a person can have fear of water, a person can have fear of food, a person can have fear of close spaces, they can have fear of other people, they can have fear of all kinds of stuff. Fear of clowns. I mean, it's an actual diagnosis of people having fear of clowns. 
Uh, look at that. Person can have fear of this. I mean, bridges. Person can have fear of mountains. So what happens if if uh, a person has to go to work and have to cross a bridge? Some people will drive 30 minutes around the way just so they don't have to cross a bridge. That's torment of that enemy uh, terrorizing their life because fear was the father. And then we have so many other examples, but God says, I have not given you the spirit of fear. So if God didn't give it to you, don't give it to yourself. Cast it away. Remember, just because a person have a desire and they have curiosity. Remember, it was curiosity that caused Eve to eat of the fruit. So a person may say, but I like it. I'm curious about it. I'm interested in it. Yeah, but don't let your interest ruin your, your destiny. Don't let a person's interest ruin their dreams and, and what God is causing them to do. Well, but in the midst of this, if a person have seen what that battling fear and it's a spirit, God has given us hope through his only son, Jesus. God sent his son into the world. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And it says again, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. God didn't send Jesus into the world to say, ha, 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 I caught you, you messed up. Ha, ha, I, I caught you, you can't get right. No, he didn't send Jesus into the world to condemn us, but he sent Jesus into the world that we may have life and have it more abundantly, that we may be saved, that we may be delivered, that we can be brought back to God and brought back into the, in the reconciliation, right relationship with God. The Bible says how God was in Christ Jesus reconciling the world into himself. So a part in the Bible said the enemy coming nothing but to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus come that, that we may have life and abundantly. He wants you to have abundant life. He don't want your life to be uh, um, in bondage to fear. He doesn't want the, the enemy to put yokes and chain upon you to keep you from living the abundant life that he has come to give you. So what he has given is provisions through his death, burial, and resurrection. He has destroyed the power of fear from reigning over our lives so that we doesn't become slave to sin, slave to fear, slave to any of the principality powers and spiritual entities that the enemy would try to use as slave masters to bring our life down into the structure. No, whom the son set free is free indeed. And if the son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And I want you to create, I want you to understand that through Jesus' death, burial, uh, and resurrection, and ascension into heaven to the right hand of the Father, he has given forth a victory unto you. He has already defeated every spirit of fear and he has handed his victory to you and me if we will put our faith in him, make him our Lord and our Savior. If we give him uh, our life, he will give us his victorious life and, and that victorious life that he gives triumphs over every demon and devil principality that would try to fight our life because Jesus already defeated them. Once his life is in us, that same victory defeats them to give us victory. Listen, if you have been overcome by fear or right now you may be planning this whole coming week that I'm going to watch all these scary movies, I'm going to watch all this thing and I'm going to impart fear into myself, I, I want to encourage you, don't, don't, don't do that. You know, let, let the power of God rescue you and to fill yourself with his love. Or maybe you may have been one that you say, I mean, I didn't, I've never known this. This is the first time I heard it. And right now you may be carrying 5, 10, 15, 30 years of deposits of fear. I want you to understand that the grace of God and the power of Jesus' resurrection is able to destroy those things and, and give you a brand new start, uh, totally el eliminating those things from uh, being deposited within you. And I want to pray that that takes place. Before we do, even before you get off those benefits, one of the greatest benefits of all is having God's eternal life. What good if, if God chased away all the, the deposit of fear, but a person still miss heaven and go to hell? No, God wants you to, not only to help you and heal you and to deliver you and rescue, but most of all, he wants you to have eternal life. So if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, or you may have, but you walked away from him, I want to give you an opportunity to return back to God and let the fullness of his will be in your life. So say these words with me, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus died on the cross, he shed his blood, and he rose again on the third day to deliver me from all sin. And I, this day, repent of all my sins, and I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. Be my Lord and my Savior, and I promise to serve you all the days of my life. And right now, according to your word, I am saved. Thank you, Jesus. For saving me. Amen. If you said that in a minute from your heart, I want you to know that you are saved and Christ is now your Lord and Savior. And I want to encourage you to um, read your Bible every day, talk to Jesus every day, find a good Bible believing church, and continue to let God 
uh, bring your life into the fullness of all that he desires for it to be. Now, second thing, I want to pray for somebody. If you may have a, or deposit of fear and you're battling fear, that there's grace to deliver you. Lift your hands with me right there where you're at, except if you're driving, you don't lift your hands. <laughs> but Father, I pray right now, everyone on the side of my voice, if they're battling fear in any way, dear Father, that the power of your resurrection will destroy that fear from their life. The power of your blood, the power of your word, the power of your name. In the name of Jesus, we're alone this to pray. Set these, your people, free. Let there be the same power that manifested itself on resurrection morning. Let it manifest in the lives of these, your people, today, that they'll begin to walk in victory. Starting today, in the name of Jesus, we decree it and declare it. Believe that it is so. We thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Listen, i got a quick announcement for you. So I want you to say, right before this now, I want to say, listen, it, what you have believed from God for is happening now in the spirit realm. So you continue to increase that by just going through the day, giving God praise. So just continue to praise God, giving him thanks and praise that fear is destroyed from your life. And then don't go back to fear. I don't care what movies or television shows try to come on. Avoid those things so to keep your spirit man free. The Bible says, stand fast in the liberty. That's the freedom. Stand fast in the liberty wherein Christ has made you free and don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage is what the scripture verse says. So as you do it, God will continue to bless you. Got a quick announcement for you. Listen, we are about to release the online uh, spiritual warfare training, the online spiritual warfare training, where we'll teach you online from the comforts of your home, self-paced with videos, with graphics, with understandings and diagrams, the whole nine, where you can understand how to operate in 50 advanced spiritual weapons. We talked about one today that destroys the enemy of fear, but there are many other enemies that try to come and wreck a person's life. And you need to know as many weapons as you can to destroy them all. Each one of them from God's word. And we would love for you to be a part of that and share that with us. It's going to come in the next week or two. We'd love for you to be a part of it. If you want to hear more about it, you just send an email to thebookofwarfare at gmail.com, thebookofwarfare at gmail.com. We'll send you more information about it. Exclusive training, hours and hours of individual sort of training. I mean, that we put a lot of time and effort. So if you are interested, and you can do it from the comfort of your home, online, uh, your mobile device, and even an app. 50 days of 50 spiritual weapons and be a blessing to you. So Father God, I thank you so much for this time you've given us. Pray dear Father that everybody who's listening, that you bless them tremendously and that you keep them and that they may continually change level as they put their faith and their trust in you as Jesus will alone as your Christ, that your divine will will be done in the lives of your people. To the praise and the honor of our Father in heaven and through the power of the Holy Ghost, we pray and believe that it's so. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you at the next appointed time. Again, thank you so much for being with me here today. Bye-bye.